Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And imagine for a second, you're looking at the universe, you're looking at the night skies and you're trying to discover something new out there. You're using a radio telescope for that and as you're looking around, you discover something we have never seen before. Something that's so unusual and so strange that you don't even know what to name it. And you end up naming it ORC, which stands for Odd Radio Circle. Because it's only seen in radio waves, it's circular and it's super strange. So this is exactly what the scientists just recently discovered, and they found four of them in the night skies. Let's talk about this and welcome to the math. So before I start, we know absolutely nothing about these objects. Four of them were discovered in the night skies, four of them seem to be somewhat similar, and four of them are absolute mystery to us right now. We don't really know what formed them, we don't really know how far away they are, how big they are, and what exactly they are to begin with. But we do know some things. And first of all, what exactly and how exactly was this found? Well, first of all, all of this was done in uh, radio frequencies with radio telescopes. A lot of these are usually in Australia because the night skies there are extremely beautiful, very, very quiet, and there's practically no one for hundreds and hundreds of kilometers in every direction. So normally you can see absolutely everything in the night skies. And very recently, this new project known as EMU or Evolutionary Map of the Universe was started by one of the Australian universities to try to create a much more detailed radio map of the uh, night skies, of the universe itself. Currently, all of the maps of the universe um, only have approximately two and a half million different radio objects in them, and this was done a few years ago, so our actual radio map of the universe is not really that good just yet, compared to some of the other maps. And especially with discoveries of new radio phenomena, like for example, FRB, fast radio bursts, and some of the other unusual phenomena I covered in the video of the Exotica catalog from SETI, I've talked about some of the mysteries that we already have with the currently observed radio telescopes. But the EMU program expects to discover at least uh, 70 million more different objects, essentially creating a map that's about 50 times higher in resolution. And it didn't really take long for the scientists to discover something unusual already. And that something is actually pretty big, it's not something small. So it's very surprising that we didn't really see it before in some of the previous surveys. So as I mentioned, these objects currently have no explanation. We're just going to call them orcs, odd radio circles. Only four of these objects were discovered so far, and all four of them are, well, they're circles, they seem to be pretty big in the night skies, but we obviously don't really know how big they are because we don't really know how far away they are. In terms of the actual size, if you were to compare them to, for example, a full moon um, in the night skies, these are about 30 times smaller. So they're not really that big, but they're also not really small. They're technically bigger than a typical star would appear if you could see them in radio waves. But we probably didn't see them before because they are kind of faint, they're somewhat difficult to see. They also seem to have slightly more brightness um, on the edges as compared to the rest of the circle. But except for these observations right now, we have no idea what's going on here. We actually have no physical interpretation to this. We don't really know if these were results of some kind of a powerful explosion. And because we've never really observed these from other known phenomena, like for example, supernova, which do often leave circular objects, we know that it's most likely not related to a supernova because none of them ever produce something similar in terms of the shape and in terms of the actual frequencies. And what's most important here is that even though these objects are visible in radio waves and are quite large in terms of the size in the radio waves, if you were to look at them in any other frequency including microwave, infrared, visual light or any other light, so even ultraviolet, x-ray and gamma ray light, you would see absolutely nothing. So they appear to be only visible in radio waves, and because of their sheer size, and also because there are four of them there, this actually creates a very interesting and very peculiar phenomenon. So something happened there, but it's only visible in radio waves. Now because we don't really know how far away these circles are, we also don't know if they're connected to anything. Like they might be actually connected to certain galaxies, and these could be produced by very powerful emissions from a galaxy, but only two of these objects seem to have a galaxy nearby, or actually in their center. Two other objects don't have any galaxies there, or maybe they are there, but they're just really, really far away and invisible to us. So for example, here in the so-called Orc 2, 
these two objects are lobes of a radio galaxy far, far away. But we're not entirely sure if these objects are actually connected or if the orc object is much, much closer or possibly even much, much farther away. So right now there's just not enough information to suggest that these objects are in the same plane and are at the same distance. And although it's possible that maybe these are just radio galaxies seen from a different perspective or something else related to radio galaxies, which usually create some of the biggest and brightest objects in radio waves compared to what you would see in visible light, there's still just not enough information and not enough data to suggest any of this. Also, because this is the first time we actually see these phenomena and we've seen a lot of radio galaxies before, it's kind of unlikely that uh, they're related. Or at least maybe this is just a completely new phenomenon from the radio galaxies we've never really considered before. And although they do kind of resemble this, for example, this is actually what a typical star-forming galaxy, a radio galaxy in this case, looks like in radio waves. It's basically a circle with the edges quite visible. This was actually from a galaxy known as NGC 6935 that you see right here in visual light. There are still way too many differences here in terms of the shape and even the frequencies emitted. But in the paper, the scientists go through all of the potential explanations in a lot of detail. Like, for example, supernova, which they think it's not. Strange planetary nebula, which they also think it's not. A star-forming galaxy or some sort of a radio galaxy, which once again they think it's not. Or any of the other unusual phenomena, including the well-known Einstein ring, which is usually formed by the gravitational lensing effects, and in this case we usually see them in visual light, but they obviously could also form in radio waves. And this also seems to be not the case. So using many different potential physical explanations, at least using common physical phenomena, the scientists uh, sort of come to a conclusion that none of them are satisfactory. It's not an unusual star, it's not an unusual galaxy or a nebula, and it's not an unusual gravitational physical phenomena. It's probably something completely new, something we've never seen before, and something we haven't really considered just yet. And this is actually somewhat similar to how we originally discovered the mysterious FRBs. Today we kind of are getting closer to explaining them, but back then they made absolutely no sense. So it's quite possible that this is possibly a completely new phenomenon, something that scientists will now have to try to figure out. And since we've only found four so far, we definitely need to find more of these objects to try to make sense of them, to try to understand what formed them, how far away they are, and also how big these objects actually are. Because right now they could be either as small as a typical star system, or as big as some of the largest structures in the universe. But I guess until we learn more, that's unfortunately all we can say about these objects. You can read the paper in the description below, it actually does provide a lot more information about some of the other physical phenomena that were present in these uh, orcs. But once we learn more about them and once we understand what's going on here, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. So make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.